Okay, we are back. This is part number three. And uh, I pray it's been a blessing. Again, this has been my study all week. I, I, I will listen to that song, Lord, order my steps according to thy word. And again, God put in my heart, go back to the beginning. And, 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 and so I, I've been studying this right here all week long in those areas. And, uh, but, you know, and, and then it said, be imitators of who God. Well, you can't imitate somebody that you, know, you don't have the potential to do. Is that right? So as we, as we look at this again, talking about being what? Fruitful. He didn't say that until after what? He had put the blessing on it. Is that right? Because the blessing is designed to do what? We said the blessing is designed to bring the re into reality the thing that you are saying. That blessing is on your life. So that's, that's an empowerment. Is that right? That God put on us. Now, and then he said, be fruitful. Then we said also it means to what? Multiply. And all this was something that he, God could not, God would not tell us this if it wasn't something we could do. Is that right? And what I'm saying is a lot of times at the church, we're praying for some things that God says, do it. Peter and John did not pray for the man at the, uh, uh, at the, um, at the gate called Beautiful. Right? Mm -hmm. They used their power, their authority that was invested in them in the name of Jesus. He said, Simon, go have number such as we have. In the name of Jesus, and the man got my walk, and they pulled him up. What I'm saying is, Jesus just rebuked that storm, didn't he? What I'm saying is that the works that he did, shall we do also? Shall we do also? Shall we do also? The works that he did shall we do also. So sometimes we've been praying about some things that we should already just go and do. We're empowered to do those things. We're empowered to be fruitful. We are empowered to multiply. Is that right? And then we, it's point number four, he said replenish. I like that part. Replenish the earth. Not just Coolidge, Florence, Cass Grand, replenish the earth. Amen. That means, the word replenish means to refill. It means to restore. It means to resupply that which has been depleted. So in, in verse 2, everything had been what? Depleted. And God says, I want you now to restore it all. Oh, my God. Is that right? He says, everything has been depleted from chapter verse 1 and verse 2. I want you to now go forth and multiply. I'm giving you the authority to create more human beings. And to increase. I'm giving you the authority to replenish, which means I want you to refill the earth. I want you to restore everything to its original state. I want you to resupply what's, what happened with the devil. Everything has been depleted and used up. I want you to replenish it. Are you following that? It means to also, it, it says it means to add or bring back to its original level or state. To add or bring back to its original level or state. And he's referring to verse 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. When I created everything and it was good. I want you to now replenish everything. Back to what? Its original state. I want you to restore everything back. That's our assignment. That Coolidge now and Pastor, you are responsible now to restore and put back Everything and cool is going to look like the Garden of Eden. Cascade will look like the Garden of Eden. Are y'all following that? I want you to replenish. That's your assignment. Restore, resupply. Everything has been depleted. I want you to bring it back to its original level and its original state and, 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 and the, of the first fruit. When we said the beginning, we said the first fruit. I want you to bring it back to the original, the, the lushness and the, and the juiciness of what I made in that first fruit 
in the beginning, I want you to bring everything back to that point. And it's in you to make it happen. Little Elohim. Yes, yes. <laughs> Is that right? So replenish means to restore to fullness. It means to re refill until it is full or restore to its original capacity. It means to fill the void. Remember, it was darkness and void upon the distance. He said, I want you not to fill that void. I want you to replace what has been consumed, exhausted, or diminished. That's our job now. It also, the word re renew, um, the replenish also means, it means to refresh, to renew, to revitalize, and to regenerate, words begin to function again, viable again, and sustainable again. I want you to replenish Phoenix, Arizona, Alfred. I want you to restore it. I want you to restore it. I want you to refill. I want you to make it, bring it back to its original state. And everything that has been depleted, I want you to bring it back up to full. That through you now, I'm going to make the, my original first fruit that I had in the beginning, but I'm going to do it through you now. I'm blessing you. I'm empowering you. I'm empowering you that you're going to be fruitful. I'm giving the ability to have children to, like, I, like I made y'all. I'm giving the ability to make some more y'alls. Because you're a little Elohims now. Is that right? So that's our responsibility. So then he says this. The next point is called subdue. See, if, this is now, oh, I hope you get this. If you, hold on a now. Again, I want you to understand, I understand who, who our chief is. God of, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. But think about this. If you are anything less than a God, you can't do this. If you are anything less than a God, you can't do this because it would be blasphemy. Again, we understand who's the chief, who's the Lord of Lords, but we came out of him. Amen. He gave us the ability to act like and do what he does. Amen. Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also. As he is. So are you in this world. Amen. Know ye not your body is his temple now. He walks in you. You are flesh of his flesh, bone of his bones. So, so anything less than that, you'll back off of this. Because your insecurities will take over. Amen. Your inferiority complex will take over. Your religious spirit will take over. This is not three-dimensional. This is taking the next level. Unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, and above what you can ask or think according to Elohim working in you. Amen. Has nothing to do with the outward appearance. Has nothing to do with your education or lack of it. Has to do with understanding that I am who Elohim says I am. I have what Elohim says I have. And I can do what Elohim says I can do. But anything less than a God. We're not talking about big, I'm not talking about God of heaven. He's the big, he's, he's the, he's the Godfather <laughs> of all of us. But anything less than knowing you at that level, you'll back off of this. Well, maybe if I fast for 40 days. No, no, no. It has to be with your DNA. It has to do with your inheritance. Has to do with you've been born of God. I said, You've been born of God. You came out of Him. Philippians said, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not equal, thought, thought it not robbery to be what? Equal with God. He said, that's not robbery to me. But he made of himself no, like, no reputation because he understood that, you know, I'm bringing myself in this point because I got to tell you all how to, how to operate at this level. 
Are you following what I'm saying today? See, as, as, as leaders, we need this to lead the people out of bondage. To lead people into the promised land. And to command the earth. That's under our, look what it says. What's the next point? Everybody says subdue. That, that's the next point, isn't it? Subdue. And the word subdue means to subject or to force or to keep it under and bring it to your bondage. It means to make it subservient to you, to dominate and to beat a path in Jesus' name. He says, I want you to subdue it. A lot of the things that we're doing, we're doing because we've been raised religiously. But God says, I want you to take this next point. I want you to subdue. I want you to make it because the earth is supposed to be your servant. The fishes are your servant. Peter was fishing all night long, called nothing. because He was toiling. Jesus came along as the dominant uh, as, to subdue. So I, I, the fish is under my control. So throw it over there. That's what we're coming into, saints. That's what I'm seeking God about right now. Because that's the level that Jesus said, the works that I do. Come on, you follow me? Shall you do also. And, and God said, I, I want to bring y'all up to that point because that's where ch- you're going to preach one Sunday and 3,000 folks get saved. <laughs> Peter operated in that. See, just about 52 days before that, he was cussing. But he got, he got Elohim in him. And after he got filled with the Holy Ghost, Elohim, he said, men and brethren, <laughs> this Jesus is not dead as you suppose, but this is that which is prophesied by the prophet Joel that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your son and your daughters, they're going to see visions and have dreams. And upon my handmaidens, uh, I'm going to pour out my spirit and you're going to see signs and wonders in the earth they leave. So what he's saying is that this day is a sign of the Holy Ghost working in man. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost breathing on man. Man operating as Elohim Amen. in the earth. With the blessing on his life. Subduing. Subduing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Subdue means to bring it under your control. It means to bring it into subjection. It means to, uh, it implies exerting, uh, exerting authority and mastery over the natural world. That's what Jesus did. The natural world was under his control. Who is this man that even the wind and the seas Obey him. He was subduing. The fish obeyed him. Peter need money for his taxes. Just go down there and look in the fish's mouth. You'll find a piece of, he said, a piece of money. He was operating as Elohim in a man. That's what God is raising the church up to. Let me, no, let me say again. I, I, I'm mistaken that. That is, that is a revelation that God wants us to have because <laughs> it's already done. Yeah. We'll say it again. That is the revelation God wants to give to us because as far as he's concerned, it was already done. Amen. Ephesians says, who hath raised us up and made us sit in heavenly places. So God is not doing it. We need a revelation of that. Amen. We are seated with him. Above precise powers. So God is not doing it. He's given us a revelation of it. God in us, the hope of glory. Are y'all getting this today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So then, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, makes this statement in the Amplified Bible. You scroll down a little bit on your notes. It says, the Amplified Bible says what? And God what? Bless them. And said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Oh, my God. Subdue it using all its vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. That's who we are. That's what we have. That's what we're going to do. That's the revelation God wants us to get. Amen? Because, like I said, three-dimensional world, church, we operate, we would operate in that level. We're trying to make things happen. But this world over here, God's already, it's already happening. We just, like I think women said, you ain't got to pray and ask God to bless it. It's already blessed. You just got to get in the blessing. And God, please, Lord, Lord, help us today to have a revelation of this. that We can walk at this level. In Coolidge. In Casa Grande. In Phoenix. And wherever you may be. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? And oh, you ready for this next point? Take dominion. Now that's, now that, you, you can't do that over the whole earth. Unless you understand that you are little Elohim. Jesus said that. What it says? And have dominion. Have dominion. Have dominion. Can you imagine what he, can you imagine the wording he's using? That if we, if we define those words in the context where he's talk, talking that, he's not talking about, you know, have a little church. He's talking about, I want you to take dominion over all this earth. In other words, you are, um, let, let me give you some scriptures on this. Psalms 8 and verse 4. David kind of got overwhelmed in this. David became so overwhelmed when he, as God began to expose David to this kind of revelation. Psalms 8, 4 says, David said, well, Lord, what is man? That you're so mindful of him and the son of man that you visited him, verse 5, for you made him a little lower than angel. That word angel is in the, in the Hebrew is called Elohim. See, the English translation is angel, but actually it's called Elohim. We're a little lower than Elohim, mean he's the head man. Is that right? It said, but you crowned him with what? Glory and honor. So we're crowned with that glory and the honor of Elohim. Verse 6, you made him. To have what? See, you were made like that. We were never made to be under anybody. Amen. He made us to have what? Dominion over what? The works of his hands and as what put all things under his feet. Amen. We were made like that. That, that is your DNA. Amen. So that when God took material, he made you out of that. You're made out of that computer. You, 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 you are cut out of God. He made you with the ability to have the main earth thing. And, and so therefore, he put everything under your feet. God would not, would you put your child in anybody's hands that you work for? Would, if you just bought a brand new car, would you let anybody drive it? No. And God is saying, I'm putting everything I just made in your hands. I made you with the capacity to drive this car. You had my Rolls Royce. And my wife probably drove my car just nothing because, you know, I talk to people all the time. I just bought a brand new Rolls Royce Phantom. And uh, I, I told some of my assistants, I said, you know what? I don't want you to drive this car because I don't want to forgive you. <laughs> because, you know, I got to forgive you, but I don't want to forgive you. So I'm going to let you drive my car. <laughs> so I went to this one restaurant. You know, you, have, you go into the ballet place. And, uh, and, and this, I said, man, are you sure you can drive this car? Because the Rolls Royce, you know, it has different ways, you know. And, uh, and so, oh, you know, I can drive this one. The ballet I can drive it. So I get in, and the, and the little ballet guy and came back. So I told my driver, I said, go in there and see what's going on. He's having a hard time getting in park. Because in the park, you don't do like You just hit the deal like this, and it, it will go on park. He's trying to go like this, and it will go on park. He's like, struggling. And, uh, and so sometimes you got people that say they know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. So I... So I I wouldn't put my, I'm going to let anybody drive. I said, I tell my driver, you go park it in, 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 in the, because these guys, they set it, but they, you know, they, they're driving a Chevy. They don't really know how to drive a Rolls Royce, not putting, those, not putting the Chevy down, but, but it's a whole other level. You know, my, one time my Rolls, I, I, bought, I had bought this old model that one time, my first one was like a, a, like a, a 1982, like my first one I had. But it was, it was like 10 years old, so it would have some problems. So the, so the brake light came on. So I'm thinking, you know, brake light, I go to Jiffy Lube. <laughs> so I go to Jiffy Lube, 
you know, you, you, know, you put some bread for Oh, no, because we got the big old, that big old barrel they got. You know, put some bread for and, uh, and then I said, let me, let me read the, uh, the instructions on this. So I look in the, uh, the driving manual. It said, do not put brake fluid in this car. What? Never heard of that before. And so I, I, I went to the guy, man, look at this. Read this. He's, oh, my God. And so I didn't know the difference. So that, later that week, I took, I took it to the Rolls Royce dealership. He said, he said, sir, if you would have put that brake fluid in this car, it would have cost you $10,000 to correct because it would have rested your whole brake system. I didn't know that. Because my mind, I'm, not, I'm thinking, you know, you know, you go to Jeff Loop. He said, and so, uh, what I ended up doing that Saturday, was on a Saturday, that the Rolls Royce dealership was in, uh, was in Scottsdale. So I'm going to the Rolls Royce dealership, and I asked him, I said, uh, I said, sir, I said, I need some brake fluid. He says, he said, what's going on? I said, my, you know, my, I, you know, this older model car, brake fluid, it's low, it's like that. And, and, and I, I, he, 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 he said, right now, he said, the, 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 the office, you know, where they, the service office is closed. He said, what I'm going to do, he says, I'm going to go back in there and get you some, some brake fluid that goes in the car. I said, how much does it cost? He said, no, 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 we don't want to charge for this. We don't we never want our Rolls Royce on the side of the road. We didn't make them to be on the side of the road. And he gave me what they call, what's it called? Mineral oil. Mineral oil, never heard it before. And, a, and, a, and, a, and a, for brake fluid, it takes mineral oil. So that's what happens sometimes in us things. We're Rolls Royces. We're putting, we're putting the wrong brake fluid in there. We take mineral oil. But if somebody is used to Jiffy Lube and they've not read the manual, they may be putting the wrong thing in you. Like, you, not, you can't do this. You can't have a thousand in a church. You can't have a multi-million dollar church a year. That's called brake fluid talk. That's what I said. Be careful how you hear, and what you hear. Who's teaching you? And we, you know, we, what, what's wrong with me? That's brake fluid. <laughs> That's brake fluid. <laughs> Mineral oil. Ah. ah. Go back to the manufacturer. Go back to the beginning of how it was originally created. And then the tires on that thing. Now, the tires on 82 was like normal tire, but on the tire, I, had a, a, I bought a 2004 Rolls Royce Phantom, which is the first time you'll tell me to see the long Phantoms. And so, I, so my tire kind of went down. And uh, it gets, you know, like a little, little knot of time in the tire. So I go, and they said, no, sir, we don't fix these tires. You have to buy a brand new tire. What? You go to other tires, you just go down there, fit, you know. No, we don't fix these tires. And because uh, and, uh, and, and, and the tire has a tire inside of a tire. Because we don't know what I'm on the side of the road. Hmm. Well, how much does it cost? Well, sir, each tire costs $1,400 a piece. They say if you want to buy a Rolls Royce and you have to ask how much gas it uses, you ain't ready for a Rolls Royce yet. <laughs> now, if you have to ask how much gas it uses, you're not ready for one yet. I'm talking about your value. When you know who you are, you know what you deserve, and you know what you can begin to accept. I'm taking you back to the beginning, to Rolls Royce Living Saints. Because that's who God originally created you to be. You are sons and daughters of God. He who was and which is and which is to come. The silver and the gold belongs to him. Talent out of the hills belong to him. That's who you are. you are. You are not DES people. You're not food stamps people. You are prime beef. Choice. That's who you are. I'm, what I'm, I'm pouring mineral on y'all today. I'm pouring that, the kind of food that, you was, that your spirit were designed to take. I, I didn't know the difference. I went to QT, QT one time and put some gas. I mean, gas is gas. QT had a good price on gas in my Rolls Royce. My Rolls Royce. <laughs> well, I, I put the, with the 99, you know, but it was like, it must have been mixed with water something. It wouldn't even take QT gas. 
Where's our Bell? And we have some guests in the car too. I'm in a brand new Phantom and it's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. But it's time now, pastors, to pour into your people. To pour into their peop in your people. To feed them with knowledge and wisdom and understanding of who they are, what they have, and what they can do. So they'll say there's giants in the land. Giant slayers in the land. He has put all things under your feet. Psalms 115 says, Psalms 115 verse 5 says, You are what? You are what? You are what? Blessed of the Lord. Is that right? Which made what? The heaven and earth. So you've been blessed by the one that made the heavens and the earth. You've been blessed by him. So, you, so you, you, you're not Jiffy Lou blessed. Your Rose was blessed. The one that made the heavens and earth is the one that put his blessing on your life. And then what they say there, verse 16, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The earth belongs to us. Coolidge belongs to you. Caspian belongs to you. Phoenix belongs to you. We got to start operating like, yeah, it belongs to me. What I'm talking about, it belongs to me. People told me, son, Dr. Craig, what you doing? Trying to Rolls Royce. It belongs to me. It's made out of dirt. And the earth belongs to me. The earth has given us anything that come out of the earth. I got control over it. So, I mean, I'm not putting nobody down. Whatever kind of, whatever kind of car you want, I'm not putting that down. I'm not saying, but you can know that, that you, you, you can have the very best and it's not being covetous. It's called having what belongs to you. Hallelujah. But sometimes, you know, people that experienced the recession back in 2010, COVID, all this kind of stuff, after all that happened during that time, you know, it's time for us to take it back, to go back to the beginning again, and to recognize that we can still recreate our world. The earth still belongs to us. Oh, God, hallelujah. Are you following us today? So we have stewardship responsibility, is that right? Over the earth. Now, let's go to, uh, to Isaiah 51. I'm going to get to my scriptures because I want to close right on time. Isaiah 51, verse 3. Look what it says here on your notes. It says, look unto who? Abraham, your father. And to, and to savor that what? Bless you. For I called him alone. I blessed him and increased him. I'm declaring that God has called you to Coolidge and Casa Grande and Eloy and, 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 uh, and Phoenix, wherever you are right now on, on Facebook, God has called you and he's blessed you the way he blessed Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. Amen. Verse 3 says, For the Lord shall comfort Zion, the church. He will comfort all her waste places. At verse number 2 in, in, uh, in, in Genesis. He will comfort all her waste places and he will make what? Her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. And the joy and joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the blessed melody. The Coolidge. Eloy, Castle Grand. The church, your homes. Get ready for the comfort. Every waste place. Every void place. Get ready for the comfort of the Lord. Get ready for, he said, I'm going to make your wilderness. It's going to look like Eden. I'm going to make your desert like the garden of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the part of what God says is going to happen in people's lives. Because people come to your church broken, void, darkest on their lives. And God says, I'm going to use you to help recreate their lives like the garden of Eden. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. That's, that's, so that's the best the people will experience when they come into a God church. Where sons and daughters of God abide there. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse number 3 says this. Thus said the Lord God, in the day that I, have I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and the what waste places shall be built. 
Verse 34, and the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by before. Verse 35, and they shall say, this land that was desolate, void, vain, is now become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste place, the waste and desolate and ruined cities have now become fenced and are now inhabited once again. Hallelujah. Church that was empty is now full in Jesus' name. Pockets that were empty are now full in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Verse 36, then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I am the Lord that build ruined places and that I plant that which was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it and I will do it. I'm, ex I'm in high expectation. Hallelujah. Are y'all following this today? Now, so again, Jesus said, that's when Jesus rose from the dead. He came, to deal with it. he came to deal with this thing for once and for all. He dealt with the devil, the demons. He dealt with the penalty of sin. And look how he rose in Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came unto them and spake, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. All power, all authority in heaven and and on earth has not been given to me, we can now go back to what? The beginning. Amen. 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 Everything that happened from Genesis chapter 1 on, you can get rid of all of it. Because it's, it's been given back to me again. Heaven and earth, back to the beginning. Amen. You can start back now acting just like God and I want you to go forth now. Amen. I put my blessing on you. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to replenish the earth. I want you to subdue it. And I want you to have full dominion. Because it's been given to me. And I'm now I'm delegating it back to you. You might have to listen to this lesson about five more times before I stop. Because I've been studying it for the last week. And every time I studied, even this morning, I got, I got this morning, about 3 o'clock this morning, and God began to get more, more on this. Every time everybody, I've been going over this, every time I go over it, I get something more out of it. Because it's revelation. It's, it's not in a three-dimensional world, because your, three, your, your brain will try to start figuring this thing out, but it's, you can't figure this one out. It's exceeding above all you can ask or think. But it's according to his power, Elohim working in you. Is that right? Amen. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 Jesus says this Behold I give unto you power, authority to, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power that Satan has been exerting in your life, in your home, in your family and nothing from this day forward shall by any means hurt you back to the beginning back to the beginning. Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs from this day will follow your church, will follow every believer, shall follow them that believe this message. In my name, I'm giving them the legal right to use Elohim in your everyday life. You will cast out devils. That means to dispossess them to remove them from your possessions. To, one word for the word cast means to evict them. Because <laughs> their lease is up. Yeah. They're on private property. <laughs> evict them. Give serve, serve the eviction notice. Devil, you've been in my home too long. Yeah. Sickness, you've been in my body too long. It's time for you to go. You have the authority to subdue and, o and override anything the devil's doing in your life right now. I pray, God, Lord, let, the, let a revelation of this come to us. Like the man came to Jesus, and I mean, came to Elijah, there was Elijah, Elijah. They said, Lord, a host coming to you. What are we going to do? Elijah said, there's more with us than there are with them. Why? 
But the, the, the servant, he, he, he on the three-dimensional three world. But Lord, this, you see all these people? Elijah said, no, Lord, open his eyes that he can see. And God opened his eyes. He saw chariots of horses of fire. Because that was a realm that existed where Elijah said, and that realm, we have full authority. In that realm, we have total dominion. In that realm, we subdue all things. In that realm, the blessing operates through us, and whatever we speak is what is. So can I say this from this point forth? There's more with you than there are with them. What no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every time they rise against you will be condemned, whether it's on your job, in your business, in your ministry, because now you're going back to the beginning. Verse 18, it said, they shall speak with new tongues. See, new tongues, that take, that's, that, that's that fourth dimensional world, isn't it? They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them anymore. Oh, my, isn't that powerful? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In other words, you're going to walk in full dominion from this day forward. You're going to be imitators of God as his children. Hallelujah. And you're going to go back to the beginning. You're going, to be, you're going to be a replica of God's fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. Now, I, I don't have this on my notes right now, but I, I think I, I read a scripture in there. Psalms, I think it's, it, it's chapter 1, verse number 3. And it's in the Message Bible. Some of you might have it on, on, your, on your iPads or whatever on your, on your deal. And, and it's in the Living Bible, the Message Bible. I want you to see something there. This is, I want you to look at this prophecy on your life. Uh, you can read it for me. Uh, you just go to any, any translation, but finally, it's either in Psalm chapter 1, verse like 2 and 3. In the, it's in the Message Bible, Living Bible. I want you to see what it talks about, the, the Garden of Eden there. And I want you to see what that says there. And this is the, the word, your word for this year. Anybody got it yet? Psalms, Psalms chapter 1, and I think it's verse, one, verse 2 and 3. Is that in the Living Bible, a message? No, no, I, I need it in, either in the Message Bible or the Living Bible. Might have to look on your phones. Psalms chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Yes. Well, which one are you reading out of? I got an amplified. I can do it either one. No, uh, give, give, yeah, give, what, what does the Message Bible say, Pastor? Uh, and says, you turn to God's word, you chew on scripture day and night. Your tree is planted in Eden, bearing fresh fruit every month. Look out there. That's you right there. Amen. Your tree planted where? In Eden. See, see, that, see, it said, see, when it's talking about that, your tree from this day forward, you're not going to walk in the council of the ungodly. Go ahead and read from, the first chapter, from verse 1. Because see, the whole thing now, we're coming away from the council of the ungodly no more. We're coming away from this three-dimensional world now. And we're going to be, we're going to be operating out of, that, out of the Garden of Eden. Read the, go ahead and read that a little bit. Not like that. Your tree what? Replanted. T from this day forward, your tree going to be what? Replanted. Where? In Eden. In Eden. Amen. That's a, diff it's a different place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Replanted in Eden, and what's going to happen? Bearing fresh fruit every month. Wait a minute. Bearing fresh fruit often? Every month. What kind of fruit? Fresh fruit. You're being fruitful. Because you're being replanted in where? In Eden now. Bearing fresh fruit how often? Every month. Every month. Amen. No dry months. No, no more dry months. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. And what else? Never dropping a leaf, always in blossom. Oh my, never dropping a leaf. No, always in blossom. That's what I speak over your life. That this, when we, we meet again next month, that's going to be your testimony. 
the doctor Craig, this month was I planted in Eden. And I bore nothing but fresh fruit all month long. I, not one leaf was dropped this year, this month. That's, that's, that's your scripture for the month. Now, Father, we, 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 we've taught the word of God today, and we thank you for this revelation. I pray that every time we read these, these scriptures, we listen to this word, that, Lord, you'll give us more, even more revelation on this, about being imitators of God, Elohim, as their children imitate their father. And then, Father, we're going back to the beginning, to Eden, where we're bearing fresh fruit every month. Not one leaf is dropping from this day forward, God, but everything we do prospers according to your word. I thank you for the revelation of this. I thank you for, Lord, in, that, that giving us the understanding of these things for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Leave it up one moment, Alfred. We're, we're gonna be, I'm going to see the offering right now. For those who are on Facebook, also, if you're on Facebook, there is a... There's some links on Facebook where you can click those links. Uh, you, can, you can sow your seed for this month. He said, you're going you're gonna to sow in Eden now in this kind of anointing, and you're going to bear fresh fruit this month in Jesus' name. So I want you, I want you to uh, 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 sow your seed for you on Facebook. Uh, Zale is uh, right there, 480 at Zale, or you can do cash app at Dallas Not Apostle I am. And uh, we're, uh, we're going to pray over your seed for all of those, those that are in here right now. We're going to pray over your seed today. And we believe in God right now that in this anointing, yes. you're going to sow in Eden. Yeah. This is an Eden seed. <laughs> this is an Eden seed. And this is a seed that's not going to, not one leaf is going to drop. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you're going to bear fruit every month from this day forward in Jesus' name in this kind of anointing. Praise so, Father, I pray over the seed. Over the offerings today, Father, some people are giving their tithe and we receive their tithe. Others are giving their offering, Father. And there's others that say, I'm going to sow that first fruit. This is, my, this, is a, this is my new beginning seed. This is my first fruit seed. The seed that I'm sowing right now for the, that I'm trusting for the rest of this year to be like it with this anointing on my life at this level. A first fruit seed. I'm going back to the beginning seed, a, 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 a Eden seed. Uh, uh, and, and we thank you, Father, that not one drop of poverty or lack or insufficiency will, will be drip, drip from our new tree that we're sowing today, Father. I pray that, Father, that, there's, that, 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 that your power secures and your presence secures this from, even demonic, from, any, from any demonic force that will try to cancel out. The word in Revelation being shared today, but God, but you through the Holy Spirit will continue to illuminate this on our behalf. And Father, I receive the offering, I receive the seed that's being sown today, and I declare over their lives that they receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, that you cause people to give unto them. So we give you thanks for it, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. So we receive your seed in Jesus' name. If you're there on Facebook, God bless you all, and you that are here right now. Of course, right there on, on your notes, you, 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 can, you can sow how the Lord leads you uh, through the cash app. You can sow through the Excel, how the Lord leads you to sow your seed. Sow a good seed in Jesus' name. We believe God for the immediate harvest on your life. Amen. I mean, for you that are on Facebook, and this has been Apostle Alfred Craig, Dr. Brother Craig, say, may God's riches, his very best be yours. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.